rich and not poor. Yes, Africa has immense actual and potential wealth. Gold, diamond, copper, manganese, bauxite, iron ore, uranium, asbestos, chrome, cobalt, a host of other minerals. How is essential culture produce? have all been drained away by colonialist imperialism. Africa is far from being poor. It is Africans who are poor, not Africans. And they are poor because of the uncounted profit that has been made out of the exploitation of their labor and their lands. I raise this point so that it will stay in your minds when you may be tempted by the seductive promises of new colonialism to forget the real character of colonialist imperialism and be persuaded away from your own true interests and those of Africa. We who are concerned with the immediacy of African independence and unity are not prepared to wait upon the evolution of history. We are determined to give history a revolutionary push. We must therefore face the issue of African unity now. For only unity will make the artificial boundaries and regional demarcations imposed by colonialism obsolete and superfluous. African unity will thus provide an effective remedy for border disputes and internecine troubles. In a united Africa, there could be no frontier claims between Ethiopia and Somalia, or between Zanzibar and Kenya, Guinea or Liberia, or between Ghana, Togoland and the Ivory Coast because we would, we would regard ourselves as one great continental family of nations. Some of the leaders, it must be confessed, do not see the struggle of their brother Africans as part of their own struggle. Even if they did, they would not be free to express their solidarity. These rifts are consciously created by the imperialists between Africans where they can sit back and watch with sly satisfaction, as well as contempt for those who fail to see how they are being used against Africa's best interests. Regrettably, regrettably, those states include some who were among the freedom fighters of yesterday and who haven't won their independence are willing to drop it for some to token aid and thereby deny to those still struggling for freedom even their moral support. Here is a phenomenon against which all African freedom fighters must be on their guard and resist to the utmost. Even though I appreciate the difficulties facing us, I must admit I find it strange to watch some of us returning wing willingly to the colonialist fold. This time, they don't even have the excuse of being forced to subject themselves to foreign domination. It makes one wonder, why so much effort and sacrifice and so many lives were given up to the achievement of independence in the first place, if it can only be so quickly and easily surrendered. Unhappily for us, colonialism creates in some intellectual allegiances which are not severed at the moment of independence but remain to condition loyalties away from Africa towards the metropolis, metropolis which draws them. They are unable to appear to accept the idea 
that Africans can get together to make, a, to make viable and growing concern of a combined African continent, but rather see their salvation in coming together in association like the Franco-African community mooted recently at Bangui. Although there are many here who speak English, French, Spanish, or Portuguese, nevertheless, we are all Africans. Africans fighting for Africa's independence, Africa's unity, Africa's future.